I'm here with Antonella Poche from Roma Tre University, uh, who is one of our keynote speakers at ICLW 2020. We're delighted to have her both as a keynote speaker and with me here today. So thanks so much for, for taking the time to, to um, talk with me today. Thanks to you um, for inviting me. Yes, no, it's great. It's great to have you. And you know, you've you've done a lot of interesting work on critical thinking and on how digital learning can help people make better decisions. And that's um, always important and you know particularly critical at this at this time as we are speaking going through the pandemic. People have to understand what's 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 true, what's false, and and you know there are real consequences to your behavior and 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 to the outcome. So can you speak to you a little bit um, about the need for critical thinking and how you see uh, digital learning playing a role. Yeah, yeah. We have been working on critical thinking for uh, actually several, several years now. And I can tell that uh, it is urgent uh, to uh, uh, reflect on how critical thinking uh, could be developed and enhanced in every areas, uh, uh, in every field uh, of society, both uh, at a wider uh, level, talking of uh, society uh, changes and development um, in the employment field, of course, at higher education, but at every, every really at every level and whatever field uh, uh, we are in. The time we are living really teaches us how critical thinking is uh, really an emergency where uh, we, we need to, to work a lot. Teachers as educators or professional trainers, uh, we should take care about uh, the negative effects, uh, for instance, of uh, the information overload we, we are experiencing. Uh, these days. We need to develop the right antibodies to be uh, prepared, to be autonomous in order to interpret and assess information that we receive at different levels. We are overwhelmed with information, especially at the digital uh, level. Uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, our our mobile phones with us all the time you know they are part of our <laughs> everyday life they it's like a, an extra uh, hand that we that we have with us and so all this information uh, comes uh, all the time and uh, there are some specific skills that we should develop in order to um, select uh, the information we get. There's a difference in reading uh, uh, what we get in, in the digital way or what we used to get through papers uh, uh, and let's say more conventional ways of getting information. So there's a, a, a close connection between digital um, skills, digital literacy and uh, uh, critical thinking uh, skills. There's a, a, a close connection on which uh, we need to carry out more and more research, uh, more and more, collect more and more findings and have the possibility to um, support and enhance those skills in, um, you know, uh, as I was saying, in our, in our students, in my case, because I teach at university, but in whatever field we are working uh, in, if we are training uh, our employees, uh, we need to support their critical thinking skills because that is an asset for, for whatever company we are working in. They will be more creative, they will be more uh, productive, uh, having the possibility to uh, be uh, more skilled in analyzing, synthesizing, evaluating, and giving new ideas to uh, the, uh, for the sake of the company where they are working. We need to uh, consider uh, the proper and the benefits that critical thinking could uh, bring to every organization where we support uh, that that mm, those skills. 
you know, agree tremendously and, and, and see so much value. Um, as you look at, at changes in the workplace, you know, some jobs over time are going to become automated, but those are generally the jobs that are more rote, where they don't require a tremendous amount of judgment and, you know, just difficult decisions in most of the, the jobs, which is really how I think it, it should be, right? Pe people should be able to make good judgments and, you know, make good decisions and that's what you know the value is and something that's very simple is something that you can automate and you don't need it so that you know even heightens the need within the workplace environment for training and and practice in critical thinking skills and making sure that everybody is capable of making good judgments and understanding what's you know what's real and what's not Absolutely. and as you mentioned yeah as you mentioned the same is true very much so in the world now so here's here's a quick you know you look at what's out there in the world and i, I think your point about um old reading versus new digital reading is, is, is a wonderful one. I mean, it, it, anything that used to be printed had gone through more of a vetting process, right? So just to get out in publication, someone, you know, it was vetted, it was fact-checked. I mean, not everything was perfect, but by and large, what, if it would make it to print and distribution, it was, the odds were decent. It was, it was pretty solid information, at least for the most part. Um, and, and now, you know, the democratization of the internet is wonderful in many ways, but also it means everybody can reach everybody. And, yeah. you know, how do you know? There was a, actually a study uh, that came out just today as we're speaking uh, from Carnegie Mellon University, uh, where they, they found that regarding the pandemic, nearly half of the tweets about the pandemic were from bots. So nearly 50% of the information telling you to do you know about the pandemic might it's, it's not even from a real person so how how do you see digital learning helping people learn how to understand what to believe what not to believe what questions to ask and how to properly and appropriately vet information as you know as, as they're in these situations first of all we should consider um is this um issue uh biased some way by other um, components that are leading uh, my attention to a specific point. So we need to question ourselves on some points. First of all, that. And then, uh, am I considering all the evidence for such a statement? Which sort of evidence this, this piece of information is giving me um, in order to believe that 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 information to consider it you know solid um, are the arguments of of the speaker of the the, the author of this uh, uh, piece of information formulated in in a clear way what we need to think um, is that 90 percent of the information we get uh, from the internet or you know anyway from the digital uh, digital dimension is uh, addressed to become viral so it uh, is uh, built on certain specific um, automatization of our of our reaction you know, so they're, they're looking for a certain reaction. They predict a certain reaction. And so that's why we, we should instead uh, reflect and question ourselves on a series of issues that can be connected to that, uh, to that information. So trying to, uh, to deepen normally uh, what we get uh, digitally uh, is something that is very brief, very direct. It, pushes certain certain keys when we are correctly informed we we should have the time to uh, to reflect to compare uh, the sources to um, have a deep uh, reading what is called a deep reading there's a, a need for more time and reflection i always say that we need to uh, have a critical use of technology. So a critical use of technology can support the, re the development of critical thinking skills. We have a different uh, uh, project, as I was saying, but one in particular on the use of uh, um, work of arts and the deep reading of work of arts uh, through uh, technology using specific uh, web applications 
that helped and supported uh, the development of critical thinking skills and a series of cross-sectional skills like cooperation, collaboration, and creativity in particular. Again, we need to find a balance and we need to find a way of using technology in order to support certain other skills, which is absolutely possible and uh, should be supported. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely, completely agree. And, you know, I think if you look at the model of education that's still the most prevalent both in, in schools and, and even in the workplace is the idea of, of lecturing or, or reading something and then taking a test on it and you pretty much memorize the information. It's not necessarily in context. It's not necessarily going to help you do a job better and it's certainly not encouraging you to think. And, and you know, though that model really came about because of the need to scale up, right? If you think back to the way earlier days people were doing apprenticeships, they would work directly with an expert and they would learn much more by doing and they would get coaching guidance and feedback and, and sort of the, you know, the ways that the educational research tells us are the right ways. And when we had a need to train mass workers, you, you couldn't really scale that up, right? That's completely understandable. But with technology, you can scale up, right? So if you build an environment, you build your app for people to learn critical thinking skills, where they're practicing, making analyses of things and get some, some evaluation on that, that, that can scale up. You can have a million people use it or 10 million people as easily as you can have one person use it. And that's where technology can really be part of the part of the solution. And so I know, what, what are your thoughts now? We're sort of in an interesting time in both workplace learning and education. All of a sudden, everybody's forced to train and teach remotely, out of nowhere, unexpectedly. But it gives us yeah. the opportunity to maybe redo the model of education that probably wasn't intended to last quite this long, um, given what we can do technically. So what are, you, what are your thoughts on kind of where education and, and workplace learning might be able to go in this world and maybe we can see something good come out of the, the horrible situation that we're in and that we can re redo the way that we think about uh, education and training. Absolutely, absolutely. I absolutely agree with you. This is a huge and tremendous opportunity uh, that we have to, um, you know, rethink uh, the way uh, distance learning uh, and training is offered from a certain point of view we have been forced to have this you know uh, rethinking and to revise our our uh, curricula uh, in in teaching and learning and in training uh, this revolution that we had to face in a very very short time actually had some positive uh, uh, effects. You know, I can uh, tell you about uh, my personal experience uh, with um, a postgraduate training course that I, that I chair uh, with my students in museum, students actually um, uh, trainees in museum education. Uh, these postgraduate courses that I chair are um, um, actually uh, professional development courses where museum educators uh, learn uh, how to uh, be innovative as museum educators. And you know well that the heritage and museum uh, area uh, was one among the most uh, harmed uh, by uh, the pandemic because museums closed down uh, and the heritage sites uh, uh, closed down immediately and lots of people were um, actually uh, fired uh, from one day to another. And I can tell you that uh, having the having to, 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 to change completely from face-to-face -to, -face to, uh, to online, uh, the first concern I had uh, was that of uh, thinking of new um, skills that our uh, trainees had to, had to gain in order to, um, to re-enter uh, the uh, 
the labor market after you know this this uh, closed down this lockdown the first thing we 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 did was to increase and support their digital skills ability working on design thinking working on the development of uh, proper uh, and different uh, um, ways of offering services from the heritage uh, and uh, museum uh, field and inviting experts from uh, different parts of the world uh, to uh, work with them on this new uh, kind of skills. The other uh, option was to invite and to talk with the, the specific kind of enterprises of companies that were that are working in the field of technology and heritage and in this uh, involvement of different stakeholders of different experts uh, we had the possibility to change from one minute to the other our uh, training teaching and learning and training offer uh, to our students and this proved to be uh, very effective. First of all, because what we, we, we gained from the, the, the field was exactly that, that people were fired or anyway, um, you know, uh, having suffered such uh, cuts and loss, uh, they needed to uh, identify new kind of profiles in order to develop uh, and to restart. And what we did proved to be um, effective because we had the possibility to develop certain skills involving um, uh, those uh, stakeholders that were consistently involved with what we we were uh, looking for so um, absolutely uh, this um, situation uh, had of course uh, um, a very a very difficult impact but also gave us the opportunity to to have a, a, an effective uh, change I'm sure that this kind of change will bring um, a new revolution, like the industrial revolution in in the uh, 19th century. Yeah, no, I think that's uh, absolutely, and I think that's we are poised for that now. It's really the right um, the right time for it. Um, well, before we wrap up, are there any any sort of takeaways you want to leave people with, just about you know how maybe they want to involve critical thinking skills in any kind of, of education that they're doing, some things that people might want to think about. Yeah, there's, uh, there's something that uh, I, um, I recommend and is related to the way we could support and enhance critical thinking skills. Of course, when, while we design our teaching uh, and training uh, activities, um, in order to understand where we are going, uh, we always have to think also of the assessment part. Assessment uh, uh, in this kind of, uh, um, of project uh, related to critical thinking enhancement uh, can't be uh, limited um, to you know, multiple choice questions or this kind of uh, uh, assessment of very objective assessment. We need to uh, support divergent thinking and so uh, we need also to rethink uh, assessment. Um, working with our uh, trainees, supporting their uh, creativity, their collaboration uh, and uh, uh, using uh, the data we collect uh, from this kind of assessment, uh, working on new digital and technological uh, tools uh, is, I think, uh, the, the key uh, aspect to have development and growth. I will tell more about this when we are going to have uh, our, our keynote speech. I can anticipate you that we have been working on a new prototype based on artificial intelligence because that's uh, of course the 
the topic, uh, the hot topic that we are going to develop during the conference. And uh, so based on artificial intelligence, we have been developing a new prototype that automatizes uh, the assessment of critical thinking skills through open-ended questions. Situations where uh, the, um, the uh, learner can uh, show and exercise uh, their critical thinking skills. That's very important. So you can't miss, you can't miss our keynote speech uh, on uh, June the 11th. Okay, well, I, I certainly would, won't miss it. I'll be there to introduce you and I, I you hope everybody there. <laughs> is there as well. <laughs> I hope all of our viewers um, are, are there for this. Um, and so it's been wonderful talking with you. There's just so much to think about, so much of a time of opportunity. Yeah. And, and you're contributing so much to it. Um, really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me today. So, so glad to be with you. Uh, my heart is uh, with you in New York, really. And as I said, uh, uh, my only dream at the moment is to have the possibility to get on, the, on that plane and reach all of you in, in New York City. Thank you. Hopefully, hopefully next year we'll be able to, we'll, we'll do that again. So, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I hope yes. so. <laughs> great talking. All right. Thank you once again. All right. It's great talking to you. Thank you. Thank you.